Good day, friends. This is Pastor Alan Peacock, Assistant Pastor uh, and School Chaplain here at Shepherd of the Woods Lutheran Church and School, coming to you with uh, another uh, episode two, I suppose, of the Pastor's Vlog for this 2021 school year as we are uh, getting deeper into January and, and now perhaps on the precipice of uh, February uh, on the second half of our school year. I have some more uh, interesting material to share with you about what your child is learning uh, from a faith as well as a social and ethical development standpoint. Uh, of course, and uh, other things that are going on here at Shepherd of the Woods. Uh, it is a gift to be able to come uh, to you, uh, and we hope that uh, this uh, this video blog is an opportunity uh, for you to, to know more about what's going on and, and also to share. And I encourage you to share with me perhaps some of your thoughts uh, as well. You can uh, always email me uh, at my school email address, and that is Pastor Peacock, P A S T O R P. E A C O C K at S O T W L S dot com. So, and I got a lot of interesting feedback in the parent line. Uh, so feel free to uh, uh, to email me there uh, at my email address with uh, any comments or or thoughts if this is helpful or maybe perhaps uh, other ways that this might be more helpful to you. Uh, as we continue on with this uh, effort at improving uh, our communication between school and particularly a pastor, setting a culture of our school. And that's so important uh, as we work together, of course, uh, in, uh, in the endeavor of developing uh, what God has given you, your, uh, your greatest, most precious uh, blessing from our Creator, and that is your children. Uh, today in chapel, it was a special day. To, today, as I come to you, it's January the 20th, a little after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, and we gathered the kids together uh, a little before lunchtime, about 1130, uh, so that they would be able to watch what is really a fantastic uh, spectacle uh, from a national standpoint as we inaugurated a new president and vice president uh, of the United States in and it's always a great opportunity. I know several years ago when I was teaching in the public schools here in Jacksonville, uh, I taught law and government and economics and history uh, and had the opportunity to escort uh, not one but two different groups of kids uh, to a presidential inaugural up in Washington, D.C., and those are fantastic events, and hopefully at some point uh, your child will be able to experience that as well, although if it had been this year, I don't know if I would have escorted anybody with everything going on uh, but uh, it is really a fantastic spectacle to be able to witness one of these things. And so uh, we set up an opportunity for our children on C-SPAN to watch that. And uh, we watched all of the pageantry involved with that. Afterward, uh, we had a little lunch afterward, and then there was chapel time. And in chapel today, we talked about how important it is to pray for our leaders, showing respect uh, to those God that has placed in authority. And that really kind of used our, our the Bible text from Romans chapter 13. You know, we know that uh, God gives us all kinds of authority. And, and it's our, jo our our children's responsibility, of course, to, to, uh, to honor and respect those who are in authority, whether it's parents or teachers, uh, police officers, um, all kinds of authority in, in the life. We even talked about uh, a school safety sub patrol uh, 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 is support persons uh, that we've used here at Shepherd of the Woods. Uh, that 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 those those in authority have been placed in authority so that God can uh, ensure things like justice and mercy and uh, compassion. Uh, amongst us, so that's important. And we talked about that. We also talked about, um, uh, you know, making sure that we are listening to God as we go about our lives. Uh, in our faith class today, uh, in our uh, upper class, we talked about the temptation of Jesus uh, and the temptations that we all face as we go through life, uh, and how it is that we rely, because God is ultimately the one who protects us through all the temptations of life and how we can use scripture uh, to fend off uh, the, the attacks of the tempter uh, and uh, how we can trust in God to protect us 
uh, throughout the trials and, and challenges. It was interesting to hear the kids' feedback on uh, uh, from listening to that piece of text as we read through it, and how hard it must have been for Jesus to go without food for 40 days. And then I showed them that the world record for fasting was actually 382 days, and their jaws dropped when they saw that. But it reminds us, too, of course, that, uh, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Uh, and so we remembered that. For our uh, younger students, our primary students, we talked about Jesus calming the storm uh, and the great question, who is this Jesus uh, that even the winds and the waves obey? And that's a great question for us all, uh, is that Jesus is our Savior, he is our protector, uh, and we can trust in him. Uh, all we need to do is turn to him in the storms of life. Uh, and trust in his love for us. Now, I, I do want to just remind you, and of course I did this last week, next week is Lutheran School Week, uh, and uh, it is a spectacular week where we reflect on the, the real impact of Lutheran schools, not just here in Jacksonville, and we have some of our sister uh, schools uh, around in, in various parishes, um, but it's amazing the impact of uh, not only parochial schools, but Lutheran schools in particular. Uh, and as part of our Lutheran School Week, uh, festivities next week, we will also be having our science fair. Now, uh, as we did with the Christmas program, uh, we want to limit things in terms of exposure uh, to COVID and, and not wanting to expose you and your family, uh, as well as doing some cross-exposure. So as we did with the Christian uh, Christmas program, we will be doing a live stream of our science fair at 1 p.m. on January the 27th, which is uh, a week from today. It's uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be sending you this link. I'll also be including it in the uh, School Cues uh, email that I send out. But here is the link for that, uh, and it will only be sent out. So the only way to watch it is if you have this link. So that's uh, uh, YouTube. That, that is a zero there I wanted to point out. That's a zero, and that's an O is an Oscar. Uh, but like I said, that, that will also be on the uh, on email. Pastor, or rather, Dr. Spiegel will be sending you an email uh, in regards uh, to that as well. The last thing I wanted to mention, of course, this week, and, and we continue on with uh, one of the real themes uh, of this is how difficult, how challenging parenting is in this day and age. And if there's any uh, effort uh, that we can do to help you uh, in the midst of all the uncertainty uh, and the uh, challenge of, uh, of parenting today, uh, we certainly want to reach out, particularly from a, a biblical uh, standpoint, from a Christian standpoint, uh, and, and which leads me to my theme for today. And again, uh, I, I don't want to take credit for someone else's work. I, I find the work of Laura Kuhn, who is a, a licensed Christian social worker, uh, to be really poignant and helpful. And she has a website called Cornerstones for Parents. Uh, and this is from her website. And she says, and, and I agree wholeheartedly, she says that Christian parenting is heart work. It isn't an easy job. Uh, it is hard work, but it's also heart work. And keeping the right focus can help us parent uh, the part of our kids that has eternal value. And that is, of course, their hearts. Uh, parenting is a full-time, high-stakes job, and it perhaps, uh, you know, it, it has never been as important as it is today with all the potential threats and challenges uh, to helping our children grow and become uh, the, the, uh, the loving human beings that God has made them to be. And so we want to be more intentional as we go about uh, this effort of parenting. And we're, we're, as parents, we're faced with many decisions every day. One of the biggest decisions we make is choosing between focusing on the heart and what might be easier or more obvious, which is focusing in on our child's behavior. Because behavior, that's the things that you and I see at home or at school. It's often where we spend most of our time and energy. But perhaps we might find something to be more effective. Behavior is not perhaps as important to God as it is to us. God really does care about our hearts, um, but it's not something that is thought. We, we pastors and, and uh, social workers think of this, but it, it's something that comes to us from the Bible. The Bible tells us that that is more important to God, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. There is that wonderful story, of course, in Luke chapter 23, where both men, 
uh, were two men rather, criminals, uh, are led with Jesus to be executed. You know the story I'm talking about. They take him to Golgotha, the place of the, place of the skull, where they crucified Jesus along with the other criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah? He said, save yourself and us. But the other criminal, well, he had a little bit more sense about him, I think. Don't you fear God? He rebuked the other criminal. Since you are under the same sentence, but we, he meant you and the other, he and the other criminal, we're being punished justly. We're getting our what our disease, deeds deserve. We are pu punished justly. But this man, he's talking to Jesus, has done nothing wrong. And then he looked at Jesus and he said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, maybe you remember what Jesus said to him. Perhaps it's some of the most beautiful words ever spoken and put in our scriptures. Jesus says to the man, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. You know, if we stop and think about that story, there's none other in the Bible where salvation by grace is taught with such crystal clear focus. The man was a criminal punished for his crime. He deserved to die, and he knew it, what's more. But he asked for God's grace through Jesus, and he received it. He didn't have to do anything to earn it, and the good news is, well, none of us could. We cannot earn God's love, God's grace. In fact, we can't expect it either. But the Word promises it to us nonetheless, because of God's love. Of course, you know, he, he, the, the man on the cross, the criminal, didn't have to do anything to earn it, because he couldn't. He was nailed to a tree. All that mattered to Jesus was the condition of his heart. And that man's heart was humble, contrite, repentant, and, dare I say, filled with faith. That's how we know the heart is important to God. Do we care as passionately about our children's hearts as we do their behavior? I know it's easy sometimes we get embarrassed by that behavior, particularly when we're in public. Do we want to modify, though, the outside or the inside? The heart is the focus of Jesus' work, and it needs to be our focus as well. So the next time we're tempted to discipline in order to get immediate relief from a problematic behavior, we might ask ourselves, what heart issue is being revealed in this problem? Is there a way I can address it with love and truth? How can I gently cultivate the soil of my child's heart to hear that truth? But be wary of using the truth to coerce. Stop that. You're making God sad. Oh, woof. If I had a coin for every time I was tempted to say that. Or harshly reprimand your child using a Bible verse for support. God says, obey the, your parents, knock it off. Now, it doesn't mean it's not true, but how do we use the word? It's not easy work. Our own hard hearts often get in the way. But the one who saved a dying criminal promises us this. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And that's from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 36. Will you join me in praying daily for the hearts of flesh, both in ourselves as well as our kids? It is certainly something worthy of our time and energy. Now again, I don't. I want to give credit where credit is due. That is uh, all the thoughts of of Laura Kuhn, and it is uh, wonderful, powerful thoughts, and perhaps something for us to think about it, pray about it as we move forward. I do want to mention uh, one last thing that, uh, as we go forward, of course, uh, that um, uh, that the theme of next week uh, is 
Lutheran School Week, and that is again from Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Uh, Jesus says he has come not to be served, but to serve. And so we'll be talking a lot about that particular verse and other verses uh, where Jesus ta uh, talks about serving. Uh, and uh, and perhaps maybe what that what that moves us to is looking at ways that we can help our kids to understand what it means to serve God by serving others as well. Uh, I've mentioned uh, you know one of the resources that I use a lot uh, is a video series called What's in the Bible by Phil Vischer. If that name sounds familiar, it should. Phil Vischer uh, and Mike Naraki are the two minds behind uh, Veggie Tales. Uh, and uh, Phil Vischer I, I, you know, is a uh, graduate of Wharton, uh, rather Wheaton, not Wharton, but Wheaton College in Illinois. Uh, that's the same place where the Reverend Billy Graham graduated from. And he's always had some very interesting thoughts. But I've always wondered if perhaps Phil Vischer wasn't a closet Lutheran. But nonetheless, he talks uh, in, in, in one of the, in his website, what's in the Bible dot com about serving God and some places, some ways that we might uh, that we might do that. And he, and he makes this comment. Uh, he says, service to others in Jesus' name doesn't have to mean going away to a third world country. We can all do something that makes a difference in the lives of others locally. It just takes a personal decision that may mean a little sacrifice on our part to get things started. Whether it's commitment of time or money or both, we're called to make a difference in this world. Even living through these remarkably bad economic times, the poorest 5% of Americans are richer than 68% of the entire world. That statistic blows us all away. And it made Phil think of Luke chapter 12, verse 48. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. So, obviously, many of us already belong to a church or, uh, or other houses of worship uh, and, that can lead us to a group in which local missions can be uh, done. And perhaps our gift, our opportunity, our calling is to start such a group, and, and that's an opportunity. Uh, but, you know, start with your churches. There's all kinds of places here in Jacksonville uh, that uh, are in need of assistance. Uh, and one of the things that we're supporting this year through our school uh, is Second Harvest Food Bank, which is a ministry uh, of or work as a part of the ministry of Lutheran Social Services of Northeast Florida and has been for, for a very long time. So uh, we're continuing to offer, put our offerings into them. Uh, and so uh, service will be uh, the real powerful theme for next week, serving God by serving others. Well, this has, uh, again, been a wonderful opportunity. I, I hope, uh, again, this is a blessing to you. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, again, feel free to email me. Uh, that's Pastor at Peacock at sotwls.com. That's my email address. You can reach me there. Uh, until, uh, until next time, friends, uh, may God bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bye-bye.